Operational System Design Project, which is a uh, frozen meat cool room. My name is Muhammad Hafizuddin Ben Faizal. My name is Muhammad Fazlin Bizaham Ben Sharunizam. My name is Adisla Channel Lakeem Subrayan. And my name is Muhammad Azmi Ben Haris. So, uh, what is Cold Room? Cold Room is a structure specially designed and is led to maintain low temperature for storing storing uh, uh, food supply in temperature sensitive item. Preserving the quality and safety of perishable goods by keeping them at appropriate, appropriate temperature to prevent spoil or degradation. All right, next, control system. Selecting a cold room system for a grocery store involves evaluating various factors to ensure efficient and effective cold storage of perishable goods such as temperature range and control. The system should offer a temperature range suitable for different types of perishable items. It must provide precise temperature control to meet the specific requirement of various products. Energy cost can be a significant part of operating expense. Next, uh, food preservation. A, refriger a refrigeration system consisting of compressor, condenser, evaporator, and fan to power the cool room system. A coolant, also known as a ref refrigerant, is circulated as part of refrigeration, refrigeration process to absorb heat from the inside of the space and maintain a constant low temperature food deterioration causing enzymatic reaction. Bacterial growth and other activities are slowed down in this regulated environment. Additional, the system control humidity level Maintain them within an ideal range to avoid moisture accumulation or over drying, both of each, both of which can cause food deteriorate. Furthermore, educate air circulation in the cold room guarantees constant temperature throughout, avoiding hot patch or region vulnerable to temperature wings. Next, uh, refrigerant. Following the following the transition away from chlorofluorocarbon, hydrochlorofluorocarbon, which such as HCFC twenty two, are the most commonly used re refrigerant in large retail food refrigeration system. In the early 1990s, the retail food refrigeration market began to trans transition to blend consisting entirely or primarily of hydrofluorocarbon, such as R404A, which are potent greenhouse gases. Currently, the most commonly used refrigerant include R. 407A and more recently, HFC or hydrofluorolefin brands such as R448A and R449A. Vibration. A current system may vibrate rhythmically or 
erratically, resembling trembling or shaking. Imagine a low level constant buzzing or rumbling sound that may be felt in the wall or floor or even the air around the system. It feels like the thermal you can you get when a big engine runs close by. However, in this instant, the vibration are coming from the machinery that cools the space. This vibration can vary in intensity or frequency and range from mild to quite visible depending on the severity and, and source. All right, next I will uh, continue this to my friend Kalis. At least you forget to open the mic. Mic, at least mic. Uh. Uh, okay, uh, sorry. My background problem. Okay, uh, now we're going to see the compressor. The type of compressor used in a grocery store cold room depends on various factors, including the size of the cold room, the temperature requirements for different products, and the overall refrigerant system design. Reciprocating compressors. These compressors use a piston cylinder mechanism to compress refrigerant. They are suitable for small to medium-sized cold rooms and are known for their reliability and efficiency. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, two stages system. Imagine a complex cold room system. Okay, uh, imagine a complex cold room system that has two compressor stages, each of which has a specific function in keeping the room at the appropriate low temperature. Two distinct refrigeration circuits, each with this compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and evaporator make up the system. In comparison to the second stage, the first stage, also called the low stage or high temperature stage, operates at a higher temperature rate. The refrigerant is compressed by its compressor before going through the condenser, where heat is released and the refrigerant is changed into a high pressure liquid. After passing through an expansion valve, when its pressure drops, the liquid refrigerant evaporatively absorbs heat from the inside of the cold chamber. Uh, okay, uh, material use. Insulated panels as excellent thermal properties. Such stay, uh, actually, these are the material used, such as insulated panels, stainless steel, high density polyethylene, as known as HDPE, vapor barrier films, thermal door, antimicrobial coating, LED lighting. Okay, insulated panels as excellent thermal properties. Stainless steel used for interior surface of cold rooms due to its hygienic properties and corrosion resistance. High density 
polyethylene is known as HDPE, it provides a smooth and impermeable surface that is resistant to water and chemical damage, and also preventing moisture from seeping into the cold wood and compromising the stock goods. Vapor barrier films is to prevent the infiltration of moisture and condensation. Thermal doors is to minimize the temperature fluctuations and reduce energy losses. Antimicrobial coating can help prevent bacterial growth and maintain a hygiene environment. LED lighting is produce minimal heat and consume less energy, making them energy efficient and less likely to impact the cold room temperature. Okay, now I'm going to pass uh, to my friend. Yes, uh, this is the design of our cold room. So at, for the outside, we have a condenser unit, cooling pins, uh, and storage door. And for the inside, we have racks, uh, storage door, evaporator, and controller. Next. Next. For cooling load calculation, uh, to calculate the total cooling load, we will only collect all the calculate, calculated values. First, transmission load, we get 15.78 kilowatt hour per day. For product download, we got 0.079 kilowatt hour per day. For internal load, we got 3.04 kilowatt hour per day. For equipment load, we got 3.62 kilowatt hour per day. For infiltration load, we got 0.5712 kilowatt hour per day. So for the total cooling load, we got 23.09 kilowatt hour per day. For the safety factor, we got 27.708 kilowatt hour per day. For the system selection, we use vapor compress. We use vapor compressor refrigeration. The most used technique for air cooling cars and buildings is vapor compression refrigeration. Also known as vapor compression refrigeration system (VCRS), in which the refrigerant passes through phase transition. In addition, it is utilized in a wide range of commercial and industrial applications, including refrigerators for homes and business, large-scale warehouses for the chill or frozen storage of groceries and meats, refrigerate vehicles and railway carriage. Large vapor compression, including all refineries, petrochemical and chemical processing facilities, and natural gas processing facilities. Two compressor can also be used to build Cascading refrigeration system. So this is our schematic drawing for vapor compression refrigeration. So for the cost, the component that we use is compressor, condensing unit, evaporator, cooling fins, racks, floor panel, LED tray proof lamp, temperature controller, expansion valve, polyurethane insulated control panel, and cold storage door. So the total the cost is RM18,667.80. Next. We'll pass to Fazrin. Okay, for maintenance for courtroom. 
The first one is always inspect the refrigeration system. Uh, the second one is don't forget to check all the electrical components. Uh, the third one is make sure to keep the facility clean. The fourth one is monitor the humidity level of the courtroom. And the last one is inspect the walls, floor and ceiling of the courtroom for ice. Safety and hazard. Safety. When uh, we in the courtroom, make sure to dress for the occasion. Then implement proper training for employee. Uh, this to avoid the incident in the courtroom. And last one is limit employee exposure whenever possible. Next. Uh, hazard. The first one is low temperature. Uh, courtroom is where uh, low temperature place that it can cause uh, like hypothermia and frozen. Uh, second one is slippery surface. Courtroom surface uh, will become slippery because of the low temperature and the buildup of ice. The third one is electrical hazard. Always check the electrical component uh, for the current flow. For one is equipment malfunction. Always monitor the equipment in the courtroom. If anything doesn't right, uh, make sure to repair or make a replacement of the malfunction equipment. The last one is carbon dioxide build up. Next. So the conclusion is maintaining a consistently low temperature typically below negative 18 degrees Celsius to ensure the preservation of meat products. Then, the control temperature in cold rooms helps preserve the quality of frozen meat by preventing the growth of bacteria and slowing down enzymatic reactions that can lead to deterioration. The third one is efficient insulation and refrigeration systems in cold rooms are essential for minimizing energy consumption, contributing to cost savings and environmental sustainability. That's all from us.